Let us study about air, water and weather. Air is a mixture of various gases. It mainly consists of nitrogen and oxygen. It also contains water vapor. We cannot see air, but we can feel it when it blows. The moving air is called wind. A gentle wind is called breeze. The wind blows due to the heat of the sun. When the sun shines brightly, it heats up the land. Due to it, the air above the land gets heated up. The warm air over the land, being lighter, rises up. The cool air, which is heavier, moves in replace to the warm rising air. This movement of air causes wind blowing. Why do we feel cool air in daytime near the sea coast? Let us know about it. During the daytime, the land gets heated up faster than the sea water. It heats up the air above land. The hot air is lighter and rises up. As the sea water does not get heated up so quickly, the air above it is cool. The cool air of the sea moves towards land and occupies the space of the warm air of the land. Thus, the cool air from the sea blows towards the land during daytime. This is called the sea breeze. During the night, the land cools down quickly than sea water. So, the air above it cools down. The water in the sea is warmer when compared to the land and so is the air above it. As the hot air is lighter, it rises up. The cool air from the land moves towards the sea and occupies the space of warm air of the sea. Thus, the cool air from the land blows towards the sea during night time. This is called the land breeze. Now we know that the heat of the sun helps in the movement of air and causes sea and land breezes. Time for some activity. Aim. To prove that air holds water vapor, take a bottle filled with icy water and leave it for 5 to 10 minutes. You will see water droplets all over the bottle. From where did this water come? It is the water vapor present in the air. It changes into drops of water on the cold surface of the bottle. Amazing fact! The air we breathe in contains 21% oxygen. The air we breathe out contains 16-17% to 17 oxygen. Let us now learn about another important resource, water. Nearly 70% of our earth is covered with water. The main sources of water are rivers, lakes, seas and oceans. Most of the water is in the form of ice caps near the poles. Water is also present in air in the form of water vapor, clouds and underground. All living organisms need water for their survival. Water is not always safe for drinking. Many harmful substances called pollutants or microbes pollute the water and make it unfit for drinking. How can we purify water? Let us see. Water can be purified by following methods. Sedimentation. Impure water is taken in a beaker and is allowed to remain as it is for some time without disturbing. The impurities will settle down at the bottom of the beaker. The process of depositing sediments or impurities is known as sedimentation. Decantation The clear water obtained by sedimentation can be transferred into another clean beaker with the help of a glass rod leaving the impurities at the bottom. This process is known as decantation. Filtration To make sure that there is no mud or any particle after decantation, Water can also be filtered as shown in the figure. This process is known as filtration. Boiling By boiling the water and then filtering, we can make it fit for drinking as boiling kills the microorganisms present in the water. Chemicals By adding certain chemicals such as chlorine, potassium permanganate, etc., which do not harm us but kill the microorganisms, Present in the water, we can purify water to make it safe for drinking. Pure water is colorless or transparent. Pure water is odorless and tasteless. Many substances get dissolved in water. So, water is known as universal solvent. Water exists in three forms in the nature. They are solid, liquid and gas. The solid form of water is ice. Its liquid form is water itself and gaseous form is water vapor. 
Water can be changed from one pump to another by heating or cooling. When water gets heated up by the sun, it changes into water vapor. This change of water into water vapor is known as evaporation. The factors which help in fast evaporation are strong wind, large exposed surface, high temperature and dry air. To study about these factors, let us perform the following activities. 1. Take two bowls with equal amount of water. Leave one bowl in your room and the other in the open under sunlight. Observe both the bowls after 3 to 4 hours. You will notice that the water kept out almost dries up, whereas the water kept in your room remains almost the same. This shows that the rate of evaporation increases with the increase of temperature. 2. Take two saucers with equal amount of water. Keep one of them under the fan in a room and the other in another room where there is no fan or wind. Observe both after every half an hour. You will notice that the saucer kept under the fan dries up faster. This shows wind makes the evaporation faster. The change of water vapor into water on cooling is known as condensation. Let us do the following activity to know what condensation is. Take a kettle filled with water and kept in on the gas stove for boiling. You can observe the steam coming out from the kettle. Allow the steam to strike the bottom of a pan filled with ice cold water. What do you observe? You will see the water droplets at the bottom of the pan. You can even collect them in a bowl. This process of conversion of water vapor into liquid form is called condensation. Fog. When the water vapor condenses on dust particles in the air, they form fog. You cannot see things clearly when there is fog. Dew. Atmospheric vapor condenses into very small drops of water on cool surfaces at night. These drops are known as dew. Frost. Frost is a weather condition in which the temperature drops below 0 degrees Celsius so that a thin white layer of ice is formed on the ground and other surfaces. Rain. The sun evaporates water from the land and the sea. This water in the form of vapor goes up and cools down to form clouds. In the clouds, more and more water droplets join together to make water drops which become heavy and fall down as rain. During stormy weather, the bigger drops of water usually get frozen as ice crystals and do not melt by the time they reach the ground. These are called hailstones and the storm is known as hailstorm. Snow In all cold places, the air in the atmosphere high above is very cold. When water vapor moves up, it condenses to form ice crystals instead of water drops. These fall down as snow. The movement of water from the earth to the atmosphere and back to the earth is called the water cycle. Let us study how the water cycle takes place in the following steps. The sun heats up water from rivers, seas, lakes etc. As the exposed water becomes hot due to the heat of the sun, it evaporates in the form of water vapor. As hot water vapors are lighter, they rise up into the atmosphere. When the water vapor reaches the cold upper regions of the atmosphere, they condenses into droplets. These droplets group together to form clouds. As the clouds move along with the air currents, the drops join together to form bigger drops. When these drops become heavy, they fall as rain. This rainwater gets collected in streams and rivers, which flow down towards the sea. The water cycle then begins all over again. Do you know? Water expands when it becomes ice. When rainwater seeps into the ground, it passes through many layers of soil and rocks. Thus, the soil and rocks filter the rainwater in a natural way until it reaches the non-porous rocks where water gets collected. Thus, the collected water is known as underground water. The level at and below which water is found in the ground is known as water table. Only about 30% of the total water available on the earth is fresh water, which can be used for our consumption. So, every drop of water is precious. Weather is the condition of atmosphere over a short period of time. 
it may change any time. Climate is the regular pattern of weather conditions of a particular place. Both water and climate are influenced by temperature, humidity, moisture in the air, clouds and winds. Let us summarize. Land and water get heated up differently, which cause land and sea breezes. Sedimentation, decantation, filtration and boiling are the methods of purification of water. The change of water into water vapor is known as evaporation. The change of water vapor into water is known as condensation. Rain, dew, fog and snow are different forms of condensation. The movement of water from the earth to atmosphere and back to the earth is called water cycle. Water gets collected under the ground is known as the underground water. Weather is the condition of atmosphere over a short period of time.